imagine a time before the echoing roar of over a hundred thousand diehard fans filled Tiger Stadium. Picture it, 1924, when the real Death Valley opened its gates for the very first time. Back then, it was a humble little arena with just 12,000 seats, basically a quaint gathering spot by today's standards. Fast forward a century, and this once modest stadium has evolved into a colossus that dominates Baton Rouge, looming over the landscape like some kind of concrete behemoth. With over 102,000 seats, it's not just big, it's the biggest in the SEC, which for those keeping score at home, is kind of a big deal. It's also the fifth largest stadium in the NCAA and the seventh largest stadium in the entire world. Think about it for a second. LSU's Tiger Stadium isn't just a football field. It's a global landmark, a place where the laws of physics seem to bend under the sheer weight of the energy inside. So when you hear people talk about the real Death Valley, remember it's not just a nickname, it's a promise. A promise that you'll never forget what it feels like to be a part of something so massive, so loud, so alive. And it is Saturday night, Okay, so LSU has a live tiger as a mascot. Yeah, you heard that right. Mike the Tiger is just casually living his best life on campus, being the coolest and probably most terrifying college mascot in existence. This isn't just some costume student running around. This is an actual tiger with an actual habitat, and it's basically a game day tradition to stop by and say hello to Mike before the chaos begins. Mike's habitat is this fancy state-of-the-art enclosure that's way nicer than my first apartment and he just lounges around like the king of campus, which honestly, he kind of is. Stopping by to see Mike is like a pre-game ritual for LSU fans, where you can mentally prepare yourself for a football battle ahead by standing in awe of a giant striped cat who probably has no idea what football even is, but still managed to be the center of attention. People treat visiting Mike like it's a pilgrimage. Students, alumni, and even random tourists all make it a point to swing by his enclosure. And let's be real, how many other schools can say, oh yeah, our mascot can literally eat yours? Exactly. So if you're going to an LSU game and you don't stop by to see Mike, you're kind of missing out on one of the coolest and most slightly intimidating parts of the whole experience. Plus, who doesn't want to start their football day by looking into the eyes of a tiger? It's basically a power move. Listen, if you're going to an LSU game, rule number one is do not show up without rocking some purple and gold. Like, it's non-negotiable. The entire campus turns into a sea of these colors on game day, and you don't want to be the idiot awkwardly standing out in neutral tones like you didn't get the memo. But if you somehow forgot to pack your LSU spirit, don't worry, there are plenty of places on campus where you can grab a last minute Tiger t-shirt and blend right in. Christ is over. Now, if you're not feeling the purple, maybe it's not your color, which is fair. You can always go with white. In fact, there's a whole thing about LSU home jerseys. Back in the day, wearing the purple jerseys at home were considered bad luck. And because LSU fans are nothing if not intensely superstitious, they decided this was a hill worth dying on. They fought with the NCAA to bring back the white home jerseys, and in 1995, they finally won that battle. So wearing white isn't just an option. It's basically a tribute to LSU's sheer determination to wear whatever color they want. Thank you very much. So, purple, gold, or white, just make sure you show up in your game day gear. It's the LSU version of a fashion show, but instead of walking a runway, you're screaming your head off for the Tigers, which, let's be honest, is way more fun. It doesn't quite feel like football season unless you dive head first into the tailgating scene, especially if we're talking about LSU. Picture this, it's game day and LSU fans are out in full force. 
basically transforming the campus into a giant food festival slash mini football Olympics. And by food festival, I mean they're not messing around. They're cooking up Louisiana staples that could put actual restaurants to shame. Gumbo, jambalaya, maybe even crawfish if someone's feeling extra ambitious. It's like a culinary arms race. Except instead of flexing with expensive kitchen gadgets, it's all about who can make the best gumbo out of the back of a truck. Touchdown Village is exactly what it sounds like. A village of LSU fans who take tailgating to the next level. We're not just talking coolers and grills here. This is RVs, luxury setups, and non-stop football vibes. Paint tailgating VIP, but with endless gumbo and air-conditioned lounges to escape the Louisiana heat. Getting a spot here is serious business. You need parking passes and some football luck to reserve one. But if you do, you've made it to tailgating's big leagues. It's a bucket list experience for hardcore LSU fans, where the tailgate itself is the main event, game or not. If you're at LSU on game day and don't watch the march from Victory Hill, did you even go? It's one of those moments that feels like it should be in a movie. The team, the coaches, the band, dancers, and flag twirlers all make their way from Victory Hill to the stadium. And the energy is electric. It's like watching a superhero team head into battle, but instead of capes, it's football pads and an iconic marching band. The band kicks off with pre-game salute, a musical pep talk for the crowd, and then rolls into touchdown for LSU. Even if you didn't care about football before, you're now emotionally invested. It's impossible not to get caught up in the excitement as the walk turns into a full-on event. Everyone's losing their minds. Little kids waving flags, adults tearing up, and an overwhelming sense that this is about to be epic. If you're going to an LSU game, don't skip the march. You need that pre-game adrenaline, and this is the perfect way to get it. LSU fans often think pregame salute or touchdown for LSU is the official fight song, but they're wrong, though it's an easy mistake to make. Pregame salute is a jazzy nod to Tiger Rag, which was the top of the bop in 1970, and touchdown for LSU was co-written by Governor Huey P. Long. LSU plays these songs during all the big moments: pregame, the march down Victory Hill, and before the fourth quarter setting the perfect mood. Even if they aren't the official fight song, they're iconic enough that correcting a fan might earn you some serious side eye.
So technically, Fight for LSU is the official fight song. And it was written by Governor Huey P. Long and band director Castro Carrazzo back in the 1940s. This is the song the band plays at all the high energy moments. You know when the team charges onto that field in that dramatic tunnel formation. <laughs> A Fighting Tiger is LSU's version of a show tune, and it makes perfect sense. Originally titled Hey, Look Me Over from a Lucille Ball musical in the 1960s, LSU bought the rights and had Carolyn Lee adopted for the Tigers. Now it's a game day staple, played in the stands as the band spells out LSU or Tigers on the field. The song's jazzy, vibey, catchy intro and repetitive verse make it hard to forget. There's even a drum break where the band and crowd shout out. Tiger Rag is treated like a personal anthem by LSU fans, though it wasn't written for them. The original Dixieland Jazz Band made it popular in 1917, and now every school with a Tiger mascot has claimed it but LSU takes it to another level. The hold that tiger part is the real star. Musically simple, it's just a few notes. But for LSU fans, it's iconic. It's woven into the pregame salute and the first down cheer, played at all key moments. When LSU scores, the band goes full hold that tiger mode with the crowd, of course, once again, spelling out tigers like their lives depend upon it. It's more than a song, it's a battle cry. Okay, so LSU has this whole mini soundtrack just for first, second, and third downs when the Tigers are on offense. Like, we have thought of everything. First down, it's time for the first down cheer where they throw in that Tiger rag, hold that Tiger bit that LSU fans live for. It's basically like a little victory dance every time they move the chains because why not celebrate every single yard, right? That's the Tigers first down. Then for second down, we switch it up with this musical selection that's followed by the crowd chanting LSU with this serious level intensity, like we're summoning something powerful. I mean, it's just a regular down in a football game, but here in Tiger Stadium, you'd think we're calling down the football gods themselves. Second ten Tigers. All spotted at the 27 yard line. And third down? Oh, third down is when they bring out the big guns with Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. Because of course LSU would be like, what's the most literal on the nose pump up song we could use here? And honestly, it works. You hear that iconic riff. And suddenly you're ready to fight for those last few yards like you're training for a Rocky montage. The whole crowd is into it. The energy ramps up and it's all part of this perfectly choreographed moment that turns a regular football down into something that feels so much more dramatic. And let's be real, football fans live for the drama. Tiger Bandits is LSU's way of celebrating defensive wins, with some history behind it. 
It began as a tribute to the 1958 national championship team, where coach Paul Diesel called his defensive unit the Chinese Bandits, a choice typical of the time. To modernize it, the name was changed to Tiger Bandits, or just Bandits, making it more fitting for today's fans. Now, when LSU's defense forces a punt or gets a turnover, the band plays the Tiger Bandit song. It's a triumphant moment, signaling, we shut you down. It's a rare bit of excitement for defensive plays, turning even a punt into a moment worth celebrating. Okay, so picture this. It's 1929, and two LSU students, Lloyd Funches and Harris Downey, decide that LSU's alma mater needs a serious upgrade. Why? Because the original one was literally just ripped from Cornell's alma mater. Imagine the audacity of a Southern football powerhouse using Cornell's song. Funches and Downey were like, yeah, no, this isn't going to cut it and they created the version LSU has now, which actually feels unique to the school. And now the band plays it during pregame to get everyone in their fills, and again at the end of each home game, just to really hammer in that LSU pride. Win or lose, forever LSU. <laughs> That's what makes LSU football more than just a game. It's a full-blown cultural phenomenon. From the roaring stands of Death Valley to the march down Victory Hill, every moment is packed with tradition, intensity, and a sense of belonging that's almost tangible. Whether it's the deep rumble of pregame salute, <laughs> stripes of Mike the Tiger. LSU's game day experience feels like stepping into a world where football reigns supreme, where every fan is part of something bigger. It's not just about what happens on the field, it's about the colors, the sounds, and the memories that linger long after the final whistle has blown. For anyone who's ever walked through these stadium gates, the magic lives on, alive, loud, and forever LSU. I want to personally thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing it as much as I did making it. Now, this is what I need out of you. I need you to subscribe. I need you to hit that like button. I need you to comment. And I need you to share this video far and wide. And remember, it is not goodbye. It's see you next week on Gulf Coastal Connections.